Damn, bro. Almost 20, bro. <laughs> JJ. Hello, everybody. Hey, guys. James here once again. This time, I'm bringing you the 18th, 18th of many episodes. episodes. Nice, man. Of Miami Last Cast. Your video games podcast out of Miami, Florida. Yes, sir. Today, I am joined by... Dirty, dirty at 7:30. No, no, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, my name is Javi. I've been a, I've been a gamer for, I don't know, since I maybe since I was born. Uh, I mean, I've I've known James since we we've done the the whole Modern Warfare saga, man. Which we need to do that again, man. I know I, you were talking about the broadcast. Yeah, we gotta yeah. get you back into that, man. I yeah, mean, man. I gotta I gotta get going with that for sure. No question. Um, but yeah, I thought it would be cool to bring you on the show. You have a lot of insight on on the industry. You're you're definitely a gamer, mm-hmm. and uh, we'll talk about a little bit why last night proves it. Yeah, uh, and, yeah, and uh, and uh, we'll get into that a little bit right now uh, as as we talk about what we've been playing. Mm-hmm. But uh, basically, what we, we want to talk about the, in this show is a few things. So of course, we're going to be going over what we've been playing. We're going to discuss that. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to share new releases. Uh, PS Plus games for November have been released. Uh, there was another leak uh, for another Black Friday sale. So I, I don't even I don't count on leaks Damn. anymore. I think they're just releasing them yeah, ready to we'll get ahead of the game. Just leak everything out on on the internet for sure. Uh, Battlefront 2 is going to be topic topic of discussion today. Rocksteady uh, is in the news, which is pretty interesting. We're going to uh, kind of uh, talk a little hyperbole on, on what they they uh, they got going on. Mm-hmm. Titanfall 3 is in the news. Super Mario Odyssey is crushing it. You, you're crushing that game, bro. Too. I'm, I'm crushing on the game. Should you wear a t-shirt that says, I love Nintendo, or just, <laughs> I love Mario, bro? So. I don't know, man. They got, they got me. They got me. By, they got me. They got me. Uh, we, I'm gonna give a rundown of Paris Games mm-hmm. Week and some of the highlights. Uh, PS4 trophies are gonna be giving some real life uh, uh, kind of rewards now. Uh, Sony uh, is getting kind of sneaky with the Xbox mm-hmm. X upon mm-hmm. us. Uh, we're gonna share that as well. Monster Hunter uh, has some, uh, something cool to say that I'm gonna share with you guys. Digital sales, and then we're gonna end the show with games as a service because you know that is. Uh, what everybody's talking about these days, and we want to be like, 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 like the neat, like the cool kids. You know what I'm saying? Exactly, man. <laughs> so, so let's get let's get right into it. So share with me what what have you been playing since uh, uh, since the beginning of time? Well, Not first, just playing just the last week or so. <laughs> well, first of all, James, th- thanks for putting me on the show, man. I appreciate sure, man. it, man. Uh, I mean, the games that I've been playing, man. I think uh, I think as you guys know, last week, uh, well, actually, yeah, last week, Call of Duty came out, World War Two. Uh, I've been trying to get my hands on to that one, but I'm, I might I might wait on that one because you know I don't know if I'm gonna go back to the the COD saga. <laughs> I don't think that's gonna be hours of fucking playing and and just taking days off of work. I can't I can't be doing that, of course. Uh, I I've been playing a lot of Injustice 2. Uh, nice. I think I think why I I've, I've been playing a lot of Injustice 2 is as you guys know, Justice League is coming on on November 17. Get hype. Uh, the the hype, bro. The hype is real on that one, bro. <laughs> Hold on, let me just take my glasses off and just fly out there. Oh, shit. True, but, true, true. <laughs> uh, but I think what's more intrigued about Injustice 2, I think the way that Another Realm has has brought to the game is that the fact that um, when they came out with Injustice, I think the first one, it was a big hit. I, I think uh, I've been playing it because the fact that I think what's important, the fact in the industry, the game industry, if you can get a comic book character into gaming, I think, remember, most of the people, kids, our age, or the fact are into the comic book video game. If you can get those two to collide together, you're going to make money. No right, and I, and I feel like DC has been missing the, the, like, the mark so much with their movies. Like, Marvel, I mean, it's no secret, Marvel is just dominating in that space. And one of the, the ways that they can get the upper hand is in video games, at least to get, in, in, get some mind share with people. And I think... You know, Rocksteady did it big, and again, we're going to talk about them in a little bit, but Rocksteady did it big with the Batman game, Mm -hmm. because really the only real good, like, legit movie that's been, like, super popular has been the Batman series in the DC Universe, but when it comes to games, it's a great avenue for them, so Injustice is doing justice to to the DC Universe. Uh, I think it's phenomenal. Uh, They actually just... uh, Talked about releasing another character, Hellboy is coming oh, out. Oh man, I'm 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 it's just su- upon us. Super hyped about that, guys. If you guys don't know right now, 
Hellboy is coming out on November 14th. If you have the Ultimate Edition, if I'm not mistaken, yes. If you, you get have it on the 14th. If not, everybody else waits to the 21st. 21st, right. 21st. So if you have the Ultimate uh, Edition, get your hands on, no matter what, always buy the game with the season pass. I think it, it's totally worth in the very end. Yeah. But guys, I'm telling you, I've been, I'm a huge Hellboy fan. I'm telling you, man. The guy is 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 my idol, and I'm I'm telling you, after I saw I saw that gameplay, and I'm telling you, I'm I'm hooked on it. A couple of my boys that I jump on PlayStation, you guys know who you are. Uh, you guys are, are way better than I am, but I'm telling you, the the customization on Injustice Two is is so fucking gnarly. It, it just it's radical to see all those characters. And just do whatever you want on these characters. You nice. can make Batman look a guy like a god. I mean, I mean, yeah, I'm, he's, I'm just a, a, he's just a dude that wears like a, a, a utility uh, belt, like a cow, <laughs> a cow in a utility belt and underwear. I mean, not a huge Batman fan. I'm a Superman fan. I've been more into the Aquaman guy. Nice. Um, but yes, Injustice Two. I've been playing it a lot. Uh, just getting the gears. I think that's what's important. The fact to get your your high level with your character. Um, I think you know. I think you mess around with the character. So, so let's talk about that for a little bit. Yeah. That's something new. That's that's not just injustice, but I think it's a new concept for for fighting games. And and that there's actually like a leveling system within the game, and this is managed through like loot drops throughout Absolutely. the matches. Yeah. So, so how that how has that made a difference from last last iteration? So how it works is is now when you do. Uh, when you do matches, like for example, with Injustice 2, how it works with them is that they have a, a, a thing called the multiverse. Okay. Multiverse is pretty much you do uh, challenges. You do okay. challenges and you get, for example, they give you a loot box. For example, they, it's like a mother box. Okay. How they do it with the DC. Um, you know, when you do complete challenges, you get uh, loot boxes, which is mother boxes, of course. Um, and then you get unlocked gears. So okay. you have different uh, sets. You have common gear, rare gear, and epic gear. Epic gear is the most. And does this affect like the actual gameplay, or is it just aesthetic? It's just aesthetic, okay. pretty much. Okay. Um, I mean, for example, I I'm not into the the versus mode going against anybody. I'm more into just doing the challenges. Okay. I think that's important. Um, you know, the fact that you can do like, for example, if you see Superman wearing. His, his symbol with an S and the cape, you can customize it. You could put the S backwards, which is pretty awesome. And the fact that you can put just Superman with a different cape and, and helmet and, and stuff like that. I think what, what Injustice 2, they're making so much money right now with that game. I don't care what anybody says. You have Marvel vs. Capcom Infinity that came out already. What's huge is for the first time ever, Injustice is actually also in the competitive scene. So yeah. TBS is is promoting the uh, the tournament that's going on right now, and, and that's part of the reason why we're talking about it today is because it's, it's top of mind. Uh, they just announced that it's coming to PC mm -hmm. uh, for, uh, for the for the first time. I don't. Uh, it wasn't. It was the last game. I think the last game for another was, the, was the injustice. It was. The it was uh, Mortal Kombat something? X. Was okay. the last game. I'm saying, but was it on PC? Is this the first time we see another realm on PC? I don't know. I, I honestly, sure. I, I don't know yet. But um, but like I'm gonna yeah. But so this like is definitely gonna open up to more. Absolutely, people. like James said, uh, PC is coming out with Injustice Two. Uh, I think that's important. The fact that a lot of people want to get their hands on on a game like that, and if you don't have the money to have a console and you have a PC, it's it's definitely worth the money. Okay. Um, but like, yeah, it's, it makes it easier. You could just pay sixty bucks for the game instead of paying for the console and the game exactly. if that's what you really wanted to play. Really. So I mean, the thing is, get your hands on the season pass. I think the season pass on this game is definitely worth it. Okay. You also get some t uh, uh, unlock skins. So how it works with the skins. So for example, if you're playing the Flash, the Flash has a skin, an exclusive skin. It's called uh, a different character. It is the opposite. It's the reverse Flash. Okay. So that's a cool thing that you can do. Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Raiden came out a few months ago. Or actually came out in September. His character had an exclusive skin, uh, a character called Black Lightning. Um, I have not played the character yet. Looks pretty cool. Um, and like I said, November 14, Hellboy's coming out. Nice. So that that I'm I'm definitely a game. I'm putting my coat on, a cigar. Cool, 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 cool. That's gonna be badass. So, is there anything else you've been playing? 
Oh, uh, right? been mainly, mainly focused on. So I, I know, I know you, you really dislike this game so much. So I've been playing Destiny two with my homies. Um, they, hey, let's get it straight. I don't dislike it. I just don't like that business model, so to speak. But I know, I, I know Bungie is amazing in their gameplay. Yeah, I, 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 I like Destiny two. It's not a game that I can, I can touch on every time I'm gonna go do it and just do my challenges. I'm the type of guy that I'll, I'll, I'm when I go jump online, I like to play with my friends. Okay. I'm one of those like type of guys. I don't like to do. I'm a lone wolf. I'm the type of guy that I like to just jump on with my buddies, jump on, play, get in the party. Let's do, you know, for example, Destiny Two. Okay. So Destiny Two is, is a good game. My game that I really want to touch on so much right now, like I said to you, man, is the Call of Duty. I've heard nothing but great reviews about it. Cool. Campaign is is fantastic. Multiplayer, I heard, is great. I heard there's a new mode called Headquarters. I don't know what. So that... it's not a mode. So the Headquarters is basically a hub in uh -huh. between matches, or it's, it's almost like uh, I compare it a lot to. Um... Like Destiny. Destiny has a hub there too. So yeah, it? so Destiny has a hub, but it, it, it reminds me a lot of. Do you remember uh, um, Home, uh, PlayStation Home? Yes. It was like this thing, like this hub where everybody kind of met. So it's mm -hmm. kind of like that, where you can kind of go and they have like the loot boxes in there. They have. Uh, th different things you could do between matches. So before with, with with Call of Duty, what would happen is the match would end, and then it will give you like a certain amount of seconds to make like the certain changes. So this is a, a little bit more building on that, where you can just kind of get crazy with it between the matches. So you stay productive while you're kind of waiting for these matches to go on. So that is basically what the hub okay. is, okay. as far as my understanding and a lot of what I've been doing. So I haven't played the game yet, uh, but I anticipate doing that soon. So yeah, Call of Duty. Uh, two is definitely gonna be the topic uh, for a while. We're gonna be talking about it uh, in the weeks to come because it's definitely. I mean, it's Call of Duty. Uh, anything else you've been playing? Um, I mean, I've been playing other games. I want to. I want to hear your opinion. <laughs> this man has been talking to me nonstop about Super Mario Odyssey. I'm. I'm not a big Super. I'm not a Nintendo fan, but I can tell you right now, I did get my hands on a uh, Super Nintendo. Two uh the console the minis I actually got two copies I appreciate it for my boy actually shout out to him the GameStop on I believe on 142nd and H Street the manager yeah, yeah. Rob I appreciate it man um but I want to hear your thoughts about Super Mario Odyssey you've been telling me <laughs> nothing but great things about it man um dude so it's no secret it's no secret um I've been like hooked on the Switch man I I I I, I dabble surprisingly I've been spending a lot of time on on some PC games. Uh, and I've been dabbling a little bit on the PS4, but most of my attention has been going to the Switch mainly because it's portable and to be able to get Mario and take it on the go. So my favorite game of all time is Final Fantasy VII, but the second game of all time, and this is spoilers because I was going to do a top 10 list, but oh, man. my second most favorite game of all time is Super Mario Bros. 3. The so three. it's like, okay. it's, it's okay. even though I would consider myself growing up, it's crazy because I consider myself a, a Sonic or Sega kid growing up because that was... Uh, what I grew up on okay. and then later on in life I was able to get my hands and play uh, uh, Super uh, Mario Brothers 3 and I actually have great game I have, some here. I have a box I have a box one there mm -hmm. like the cartridge box I'll show it to you after the oh. show <laughs> yeah yeah okay but it's legit yeah. I have a le like legit with uh, instruction manual and everything like, okay it's, it's cool so so this Mario game had a lot of expectation at least from me and i know from a lot of people out there so i went in with it uh expecting like my expectations were through the roof and let me tell you man for a game to actually like deliver on that high that high of expectation is saying something so you've been seeing the reviews ign uh GameSpot, a lot of these sources a lot of them are giving them perfect scores and calling them game of the year right now right now if it stands today I would say that it's my front runner. I keep going back and forth between Zelda Breath of the Wild and, and game winner for this guy, ladies and gentlemen. I'm <laughs> telling game, you that game of the year. Yeah, for sure. So the game is and I'll tell you a little bit about why I like it so much. So basically, and you mentioned a hub. So the hub is technically there is no hub, but the hub is is if you want to call it that, is that ship. So there's a ship that he goes on mm -hmm. from world to world. So that's what it's built on right now. Rather than the the old uh type of thing where you kind of just kind of go to the different worlds on top of the map and you control it that way uh it's not like that so it basically you have to collect these moons which is nothing new to mario games there's always been like different collectibles and then in order to move on to the next world you gotta collect these things and they call them moons in this game okay so it's it's so much fun to to kind of get through the game 
And some of these puzzles are super creative. I mean, like these Japanese like creators are freaking insane, bro. I believe you, man. I I'm telling you right now. I, the design I've, of some I've of these seen. Things. I've seen. Don't get me wrong. I've seen. I've seen the gameplay of Super Mario um, Odyssey, and I'm gonna tell you. I was talking to you earlier great. during the show that the fact that there was a part, uh, a part of the the sh I mean, a part of the game that the fact that Mario goes down to the tomb, the green tube, of course iconic oh, and it just and it, it goes just to 2d it. it goes to 2d and just 2d man oh, and man. i just blew, blows my mind i'm gonna it. have to say look i'll be honest with you if i have to get a nintendo switch i will i will pick a nintendo switch over an <laughs> xbox one x right in now. a harpy right now yeah and i think one of the things that he mentioned about the hub i think right now with with the games all these hubs i think it's becoming a big thing now because as as you know as remember hubs were were like a thing that you can you know socialize with other people like right. for example world of warcraft destiny now for sure. for and sure. now and then for example like what we just talked about with call of duty and now with the super mario i think the hub uh like industry right now with the as in getting involved into hubs i think that's becoming a big thing now with console games or and it doesn't matter what console games with PC. Right, so you're seeing a lot of like these PC and uh, PC like designs from like er, yesteryear kind of being implemented into the consoles. And part of that is due to the fact that now these consoles are built on PC architecture, mm -hmm. so it's it's easier to transfer that that sort of stuff. But it, kind of getting back to Odyssey, Odyssey is again. I don't want to spoil the game because it's it's, a, it's, a, it's it was just released recently, and I I just beat it last night, man. It's, oh man, that I'm game just puts you, guys, a smile on your face. I'm telling you, he's been playing this <laughs> since like since I spoke to him. He's like, bro, I've been playing Super Mario Odyssey, and I'm like, man, bro, this guy needs to get off. <laughs> and the only reason why he's been playing that is because remember, guys, the the Super, the uh, sorry, the, not the, the Super Switch. Nintendo, the, the Nintendo Switch is portable. Yes. Yeah, so, so I'm pretty sure this reason. guy goes plays it on the TV, and then when he needs to go takes yeah. his shit. This guy for sure he <laughs> takes it over there. So I mean, I mean that's good, man. That you yeah. beat the game, but go ahead, man. So uh, basically, I will say this. I'm not gonna ruin it. And I might, I might have, and I, I kind of alluded to this uh, in my last episode where I'm, I think I'm gonna have like a spoiler cast. Just go over the ins and outs of the games and why I like it uh, specifically rather than generally speaking. But I will say this: there's moments in that game that you do not expect that are phenomenal. The design is phenomenal. And it's a game that just puts a big smile on your face. It's not, and this is probably one of the reasons why I'm edging it over Zelda Breath of the Wild is, uh, and I mentioned this to you, is Zelda Breath of the Wild is a great game, but the tone is very dark to me. Like it's this uh, kind of defeating like this big overarching evil. And it's, Mario's just like, forget all convention, mm -hmm. forget game over screens, forget, it's just about having fun. And every level is designed that way where you never feel stuck. Um, there's definitely going to be challenges involved with the game once you go back. So that once you beat the game, the game really opens up and that's really when it gets going. So I'm just tapping into that. Um, and that's uh, that's part of the reason I want to hold off my, my discussion on the game. But highly recommend it, man. For those who haven't played the game, definitely, definitely. Uh, would recommend that. So I do have a question about uh, Super Mario Odyssey. No, sure. Um, I, as you guys know, Super Mario has been with us for generations with us. Right. Um, and you know, from back, you know, with the NES when Mario debuted with, I believe, with Super Mario Brothers, if I'm not mistaken. Um, my my question is to you, James, is that do you really compare it to this one to beat Super Mario 64? Because remember, Super Mario 64 made a drastic change to the industry, game industry, because the fact that, you know, after Super Mario 64, you had, if I'm not mistaken, you had uh, Super Mario Sunshine and uh, Super Mario Galaxy. So my, my question, like I said, was, do you compare this one to be the feeling as in Super Mario 64 being better? Or you think Super Mario Odyssey okay. would be the best one? So it's kind of early to tell. So the, part of the reason that the Mario 64 is so great is because you mentioned it. It, it was a defining game in a in a moment that it, it felt very uh, static. At least a lot of the games that it did, and this it brought like a fresh new uh, kind of thing. Mario Odyssey is more building on building on that formula, so it's not like game changing. Uh, in any ways that I see, other than that, that uh, the design is very phenomenal. I don't know if I would say that it's better than 64. 
I mean, if you go back and play 64 now versus Odyssey, I would probably say that I'd enjoy the gameplay better on Odyssey. Absolutely. Just because it has, like, the newer type of game design I, I behind it. Uh, but I don't know if it's a more important game. I don't know that it's a more uh, kind of industry-defining game. Uh, and those are the things that I think would give the edge. And obviously, it's been years and years and years since 64. And you, you can go back to that game, and it's still extremely payable. Uh Will Odyssey be that way in the future? I don't know. So as far as the gameplay mechanics, I think they're better in Odyssey, again, because it's more modernized uh, way of playing game. The game overall, I don't know, man. Maybe I had to spend a little bit more time with it, but I, I think I would still give the edge to 64 by a hair. Um, right now, I would say that's probably my third uh, favorite mario game if i had to if i had to stack them today it would be your know, super mario 3 uh 64 and then odyssey, odyssey. right below that, that's a good that's a good uh top three right there i think i think that would be my top three in that order and now if i spend more time with odyssey and and i get enamored in three or four months down the line i'm like i want to pick it up again and play some more or maybe even further three or four years down the line that feeling that ish that you get from mario 64 if that feeling is there for mario i think those are going to be the defining uh, attributes that make it or give it the edge over 64 i think sounds good man sounds good cool so uh that's basically what i've been playing i i, I spent a little time with stardew valley and stuff like that but i've talked about it in previous episodes but uh, i wanted to get into some of the games that are releasing this week we're in the midst of you know holiday season we had a terrific terrific i mean a crazy release week last week yeah yeah we did with with mario odyssey wolfenstein and, and, and assassin's call, creed and then the call of duty and then call of duty just yep. just released so uh it's it's been <laughs> a crazy amount of games I, i'm telling you man this, this is released. a time now to get your games i mean hands on game games on. yeah i mean game on <laughs> so i mean remember guys november and december are going to be the biggest hits for the right. game industry of all these games coming out, like James said, uh, you know, with Assassin's Creed, uh, you know, Call of Duty, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I mean, like I said, November and December. I'm telling you, this is going to be a hot month. And December is going to be a hotter <laughs> month as well, man. So we have we have a couple things going on. So we have Neo. So Neo is your uh, Dark Souls in a kind of um, feudal Japan ninja kind of aesthetic. Okay, uh, that's coming to PC November seventh. Uh, Sonic Forces. So I've been kind of back and forth whether I'm going to get Sonic Forces. I love, love, love Sonic Mania. Mm -hmm. Terrific game. So if it's anywhere close to that type of feeling, um, I'm definitely going to get my hands on that. So it's coming out for PS4, Xbox One, PC, and Switch. Also November 7th. Uh, not to mention, we got a console release November 7th, but we're going to talk about that. Yeah, we'll talk about that later. A, a little bit going forward. So we have that. Uh, we also have uh, Doom is hitting the Switch. That's that's on big. November tenth. That is going to be big, guys. Because remember, Doom is uh, is a mature game for for kids, of course. But <laughs> on coming a, on a kitty console. Yeah, and that's coming on Nintendo Switch. That's a big thing yeah. to happen with, with the yeah. Switch, guys. I mean, and, that... and I'm surprised how soon it came out too. So they just we just had the announcement. It seems like the other day, and all yeah. of a sudden, boom, it's here next month. Let's do it. November tenth, guys. November tenth. So I'm definitely going to be talking about uh, my feelings on that once it comes out. Uh, and then for 3DS, we have Need for Speed Payback is coming out. Uh, we have a Mario Party Top 100. I'm not sure what that is, but that's coming out for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. And then uh, Football Manager 2018 for those who like uh, that super sim kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. uh, so Need for Speed Payback is is we talked about it, it's coming for uh, coming out. That's also coming out for PS4 and Xbox One. Uh, you have uh, Professional Construction the Simulator that's for PS4. Uh, uh, let's see, Way of Redemption is also coming out for PS4. Uh, watch out, <laughs> Wheel of oh, Fortune. Oh whoa, whoa, that's not a. Let's skip that one. <laughs> bankruptcy <laughs> and then we have uh, another smaller title that's coming out to digital it's called Whoopo. uh again i'll link down in the description so you guys can get a uh, better vibe and better feeling of what these games are but that is your games releases uh, for this week the week of november 7th check that out guys so uh we have that and then playstation plus announced their games for november uh it's gonna be so for ps4 you got bound for PS4, that's actually a VR title as well. So for those who got PS4, PSVR, this is your first real free game that's coming out for that system. Uh, you also have Worms Battleground. Uh, and then for PS3, you have uh, R-Type Dimensions, great, great game. Uh, Ragdoll Kung Fu, Fist of the Plastics. 
and some of these games are got to be horrible. Yeah, pro- uh, possibly because <laughs> remember, always PlayStation Plus when the free games come out, yeah. they are not that great. I'll be honest with you. They come out once in a blue moon. <laughs> free games. I think what well, last month, uh, Metal Gear Solid: The Phantom Pain was free actually if you're a PlayStation uh, Plus yep. member. Which yep. it's crazy that I actually bought that game a week before for thirty bucks. <laughs> was ridiculous but i got i got ground zero with that so you know what i i didn't lose it off of that one so so they have a ton of stuff they also have broken sword 5 that's for ps vita that's the first two episodes and then uh more vr you have Un- until dawn rush of blood so i don't play vr particularly because i have a lot of the vertical issues i mentioned on the show before right. but uh for those who are totally enamored by the ps vr stuff you got a couple games this week and then uh, there's a game called That's You uh, that's coming to PlayLink. So PlayLink is your you basically connect. It's like it's like a Jack a Jackbox where you basically connect your phone to the game and you okay. play through the phone. So uh, those are your releases. Nothing really to call home about. Maybe uh, I'm a, I like I like the Worms games. So the Worms I, games have always been fun, yeah. no matter what, man. For sure. So uh, more releasing stuff. So of course with Black Friday around the corner, we have uh, Black Friday leaks. Uh, and, and there's a lot of stuff other than gaming, but I mainly for gaming, uh, we have Costco. Uh, so for those who have been, haven't gotten the PS4 or Xbox One yet, this is going to be a good time. You have PS4, the one terabyte, that's going for $189. Mm-hmm. And then this one's crazy. You have PS1, yeah, one terabyte. This, this is going to be crazy, guys, for this Black Friday. Destiny deal. 2 and Call of Duty World War 2 for $289. That's insane. That's, that's, that's right there. You're probably saving, if I'm not mistaken, you're saving $120 for so, two games so, right there. So what's, what's the PS4 Slim Bundle going for? $299? Uh, that one terabyte? You got $299 yeah. plus each game is $60. Bucks. Yep. That's, what, three... That that should be four twenty. Four twenty right that's there. A good so total. That, yeah, man. You got four twenty and then you're paying two eighty nine. That's over a hundred and change. But re- remember guys, also as well, for um for Black Friday, usually whenever for example, I know what they did with Microsoft, and I'm pretty sure they did it with Sony. If you plan to get anything on digital, usually they're gonna have a great deals on, on, on the Sony PlayStation Network and then Microsoft uh, Xbox Live. So check right. that out. Um, yeah, there's always Black Friday sales. Always. So I always, I always keep an eye out for that. I'm actually ready. I got a. Uh, so again, we're gonna talk about Sony Rewards okay. now. Yeah, in a yeah, minute, yeah. But uh, through my Sony Rewards, I, I got like a, I got some uh, points. Some sounds okay, good. Some, some, so I got some some oh, PSM man. money ready to go. Uh, and then on the Xbox One front, you got the Xbox One S 500 gigabyte model. Uh, that's gonna come with three months of Game Pass and an extra controller. That's for two ninety nine. Xbox One X 500 bit bundle with three months of Game Pass, extra controller. Uh, what's the difference there? Let me see. Uh, oh, the sports bundle. Okay, yeah. so one of them brings the sports games. It doesn't. It doesn't say what the games are. Uh, but there's two separate bundles. One's for 219. One's for 299. Um, so some stuff to get excited about there if you guys haven't gotten the console yet. Uh, and then we're gonna move past this a little bit. So you wanted to discuss uh, some. So you're you're big into uh uh star wars yes so as you guys know it's a great time for star wars due to the fact that you know disney purchased star wars a few years back um now everybody knows that battlefront 2 is coming out on november 14th if you get the deluxe edition and then for regular edition comes out november 17th guys i'm telling you this is the game i'm telling you no matter what (laughs) you you have games you have multiplayer games so you have Destiny 2, you have Call of Duty. I'm I'm gonna hold off off of Call of Duty. I, I want to get that game so bad, but I'm telling you right now, I played the beta for Battlefront 2 James, and I'm telling you, I was sold. That's insane. When I tell you that the fact that when I played the first one, the first one it was kind of okay, it was there. But the thing is, a lot of people were disappointed because of the fact that you it had a very, season very bones. Yeah, and not to mention you're paying for a season pass that wasn't that great yeah so um battlefront 2 is gonna have a couple things guys that you don't know yet uh the single player campaign that's gonna be a big 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 thing that a a lot of people ask ask for yeah so that i'm um the season i'm sorry the the single player campaign is gonna be fun um so they did talk about it they talked a little bit about that it's gonna be somewhere in the range of like six to eight hours in length yes so from what i know it takes place during the events um after the emperor has fall uh, from return of the jedi um i believe you play as a pilot um 
a uh, Imperial pilot. I'm not too sure what what the the story is on that, but it, it there is a single player campaign on it. Most important thing that people were really shocked about free season pass. Free season pass. Free, I didn't hear about that. Free season pass. Well, the thing is, they're not gonna have a season pass with that because the fact that they don't want to charge their, the players to get a DLC. So, from what I know, my knowledge, there's not gonna be a season pass. I think so, this is this is a sneaky way, uh, Javi. I think this is a sneaky way of, of getting people excited about these loot boxes in microtransactions. Well, I, I I I I'm pretty sure there's gonna be something there. I'm pretty sure. I I don't. You know, I don't know about the free season pass. I think there's going to be a catch with that with a twist. But I think there's going to be like, maybe like you said, with the loot box, you purchase something. Like maybe, I, I think don't... they're trying to get on good grace and be like, look, all the DLC is free. But uh... yeah, and I think that's that's the thing with Fast Fine. I mean, yeah, it, anything I, free is good, I think I, I think with EA, they need to focus on on what the industry wants. I mean, from their side and in the community as well. I think I think more than that. And you just said it. I think the community needs to be kind of pampered a little bit because they've been for the past few years they've been off their game yeah i agree (laughs) no pun intended i I mean it's very important right now with battlefront 2 coming out because remember you guys know that uh star wars the last uh sorry the last jedi is coming out now in december coming up so everybody's going to try to get their hands on this game because they want to they want to have that hype this is a hype moment guys i'm, I'm one of those type of guys that I'm, I'm very hyped up about this game <laughs> so also too you have more characters in the game okay. um dark maul yoda oh, cool. are, are, are going to be in the game i saw gameplay on it sick yoda i mean i man. i played i played dark maul in the beta and i'm going to tell you with the beta guys the beta was amazing i'm telling you right now as as you guys know, when you ever play with games with servers, they're always going to be down during the launch day. But I'm telling you guys, as a person who played the beta, and if you guys are a Star Wars fan, get it. Don't. I'm telling you right don't now. Sleep on it. Yeah, don't sleep on it. Do what James did with with Super Mario Odyssey. <laughs> Just play, go ham. <laughs> go ham and play it for hours. But I'm telling you guys, Battlefront Two. Will, I mean, like I said, James will t- talk about it in the next episode. Um, but November 14 is the deluxe edition. You get it earlier with a three day earlier pass. And then November 17 is the regular copy. Get your hands on it. So cool, man. I'm definitely, uh, I, it's, it's funny. I, I haven't shared this story, but I never saw the Star Wars movies when I grew up. I saw the original Star Wars in pieces, mm-hmm. uh, the episode four. And it wasn't until I think about two, maybe, I don't want to say two, maybe even three years ago at this point, uh, I was with a coworker and he was like, yo, you excited for that new uh, that new Star Wars movie? I'm like, yeah, I don't know, man. I didn't see the originals. And he's like, what? <laughs> and that year, bro, he had me. Like, I watched all six movies. Damn. So I, I did, like, four, five, and six, and then one, two, and three. Mm-hmm. And then I that I was getting ready for that December when that when the episode seven was coming out. So that whatever year that was, that was the year that I watched all the movies. So... I mean, the movies are good, but maybe I missed the window a little bit, and I was just like, I mean, it's good, but it's not like, well, like I, I, all this. What the, the hype is about? I don't think you're in, in a bad condition, like to say, okay, you haven't seen the movies, and okay, you saw it. I mean, right now, I'm I'm doing that with with somebody, which you know who you are. Um, <laughs> but the fact that I think right now it's a it's a really great time. The fact with Star Wars with the hype now, because the fact that, like I said. Disney has purchased them and they want to do a lot of projects. Yeah. As you know, Disney is now opening theme parks where Star Wars. You have the game industry. EA yep. has a, has a, yep. a contract to do Star yep. Wars games for, I think, for mm-hmm. 10 years. Um, we're going to touch on the topic with, uh, I believe you talked about in your last broadcast, with the canceled game with Star Wars. Yeah. So we'll talk about that later on. Um, but like I said, man, I mean, right now, I think playing Star Wars is, is really fun. I feel like a kid again playing Star Wars, yeah. And I, I think that a lot of people will, will definitely look into Battlefront Two and future games that will be coming out in the future with I'll, Star Wars. I'll games. tell you what, I mean, the, the, it's an interesting world to be in. It's a fun world to be in. And I'm, I, I am. While I'm not the biggest like Star Wars fan, I am definitely hyped to see what they what they do with this. So. Uh, we're gonna go into like the rumor mill here. A yeah, bit. So, so here we go. Uh, we have Rocksteady is in the rumors. So they they were rumored to uh, kind of they were kind of asked or in, in somewhere along the line, Game Informer got involved with uh, with what they were working on next, their next game because mm-hmm. they've been kind of quiet for a while. Everybody knows them for uh, their Batman series mm-hmm. and how great those games were. 
so it came out that they're working on a Superman game somehow. Yeah, so and they were like shot down. Yeah, really quick, so, so guys, as you know, you know, you've been hearing this rumor for a while for Rocksteady, the fact that supposedly they are working on a Superman game. And um, here's here's one of the things I I will mention to you, James, is that um, when Another Realm released Injustice Two, uh, Rocksteady sent the cake to Another Realm, and it was an S cake ah. so a lot of people were speculating the fact that rocksteady was doing a, a superman game again we have to see supposedly there's something some information that's coming out with rocksteady in december of maybe hopefully working in the superman game there has not been and i will say this because i am a superman fanatic hands down there has not been a game of superman that has been so great except for one game that i'm an old school type of guy I like I love those beat 'em up games. There was a game called The Death and Return of Superman. I don't know if you remember that back no in the day. Idea. That was on that. Super Nintendo. I mean, yeah, Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. That was the best Superman game, which was a beat 'em up game. You played as five different characters of five different Superman. What a shame to say that that game was so many long ago was a, like the the truth. I don't I don't <laughs> I don't want to even touch Superman sixty four because that was the horrible. worst yeah, game. Yeah, it was a crayon just flying around with a cape. I'm not I'm not gonna <laughs> talk about that. <laughs> but <laughs> but like like I said, um, we, we would have to see what Rocksteady does. There is I'm pretty sure that Rocksteady. They they have to do this. There is no other game that that has been criticized. I mean, the the formula is there. WB already has a good relationship with DC. Right. Mm -hmm. the, the The skeleton for the game is there. I I, I mean, it's not going to be as easy as cut and paste, but you kind of could put like a, a you know a Superman skin over the Batman and refine it. Absolutely. For Superman. So I think it's going to be an easier transition for them. Well, I, I feel and it makes more sense. I feel for, for me, for for example, Rocksteady has been rumored to do the Superman game, a Suicide Squad game, Justice League game, and a, a Ninja Turtle game. But I think the problem, oh, yeah. Oh, so um, I would love that. All right, forget I, Superman. Yeah, <laughs> but my thing is with with just to touch this last topic with Rocksteady with Superman. I think the problem is Superman's a very powerful character. How do you get Superman? How do you get him to weaken in the game? That that's that's the problem with Superman. If Rocksteady can pull this game off and get a, a Superman game, and they do it right, I'm gonna tell you right now. It's gonna do game I, I'm gonna I'm like, look, man. If I play a Superman game and I die the next day, I'll be good. Like I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm, I've been waiting a good for Superman game. Uh, it, it's got to be a really great Superman game, an open world Superman game. Because I'm the last game I think, if I'm not mistaken. That was has to do with only Superman with Superman Returns, which was based on the movie, of course. That game was uh, it was it was it was pretty bad, but I think as you as you experience with the fact of uh, playing as Superman, as in flying, you know, and just doing whatever, I, I'm gonna tell you the truth. They they need to do this, hands down. I mean, to me, I think it's it's gonna be like Batman God mode. Yeah, I, I I'm pretty sure. I think as as you guys know with the whole. Uh, Rocksteady, they've done the Batman Arkham uh, trilogy, and they hands down, they did a, a fantastic job. They did with a that. banged up job, absolutely. And I mean, I actually have all three of them on my PlayStation Digital, which I got to touch the first two. But I'm gonna tell you right now, if they can pull this off, I mean, they they are gonna be making money with that, and I'm pretty sure that if they could do that trilogy for sure, hands down, no question. Yeah, cool, man. Uh, so a little bit more news coming out of the rumor mill. Rumors is uh, so you mentioned Battle Battlefront 2. Mm -hmm. That's an EA property. Yes. They one of one of the things that EA I think did wrong uh is they released Battlefield 1 and and um Timefall 2 too close together. I think they might have eaten their own Sales, well, sorry. Titan, I think Titan. No, Titanfall is is um is it? E yes, it's EA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. So, so it was in question. Are they even going to work on the third one? Because I think they kind of set uh, Titanfall two out to fail mm -hmm. with it being so close to release. I think they were like I forget like a week or two apart in release. So, the rumor is now that we got. It feels like it's some sort of confirmation that Respawn is actually is working on the third iteration of Titanfall. Titanfall. Mm -hmm. So, were you big on the Titanfall? I I was. Um, 
you know, my older brother had a had an Xbox uh, One when he came out, and I think one of the biggest exclusive games that came out was Titanfall. Great uh, multiplayer. You got the experience to play as a soldier riding on this walking tank, which was fantastic. Um, and I played this, the second one a few months ago. The campaign on it was, I think, the campaign on that game was great. It was very short. That's the only issue that I have on that game. Um, the multiplayer is, is fantastic, and I think what they did was not making it exclusive with Microsoft and having it released between um, Sony. Yeah, that was their mistake. Y- yeah. So, so. Th- that's what it, I, I think, like, Titanfall 2 hasn't really played to its potential for a few reasons. One, the first one, they bet on the wrong system. Mm-hmm. They went exclusive with Xbox, and obviously, I'm sure their sales reflected that. On the second one, as I mentioned before, it was way too close to Battlefield 1. And obviously, Battlefield 1 was the one that went, was on top there. So there was a lot of question whether they'd make the third one, as, again, as I mentioned. But one of the big defining factors between the first and the second one was that campaign. And again, something that's happening with Battlefront, which is the first one that had campaign, this one does. People were very receptive of that. So I'm interested to know or to find out what's going to happen with the third one. Is there going to be a, a richer campaign? Mm-hmm. Are they going to kind of double down on their on the on the formula? Are they going to continue kid? with the series with the second one with the campaign? Of course, it's going to be a new character. Well, right. we we would have to see how it goes, but Respawn did say that the fact that they will work on Titanfall 3. So that's that's the yeah. good news coming yeah. out of this that so we're that, that is that is 3. really great news. So I, uh, I did want to go. So obviously, games Paris Games Week happened this uh, this past week, and there was a lot of interesting stuff coming out. So I took I took some notes on uh, some of the stuff that happened. The pre-show was very uh, it went for like an hour, but there was a couple interesting mm-hmm. uh, releases, and I'm gonna kind of rattle these off a little bit. Uh, so the game the the show started with the pre-game the pre-game the pre-show started <laughs> with the pre-game. I'm thinking basketball already, which there's a Miami Heat game today. By the way, is there? I gotta, yeah, I don't even, I I think it's happening soon, but I digress. The, so, (laughs) so uh, Guacamelee 2 got announced officially. Okay. Uh, Guacamelee 2 is basically a platformer with a lot of like Mexican themes. The first one was an extreme success, uh, at least critically. Uh, And obviously, they they made some sales if they got them excited. And that's where the indie space really, uh, to me, kind of, is a great thing. It was something that was missing from the E3 show mm-hmm. of Sony. So uh, here we go. We have we have Guacamelee 2, and then they finished that. There was a, a couple of cool little things sprinkled in between, but then they finished off the show with Spelunky 2. Spelunky 2 is getting uh, a release uh, coming soon. They're talking about 2018. So that was that was the, basically again not to take too much of the time. That was basically the 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 two biggest announcements coming out of that pre-show. And then they went into the actual show. So they announced, or they revealed the trailer for Ghost of Tsushima, mm-hmm. which is the suck, Sucker Punch game that's coming out. So this is, uh, I, I mean, if you're big into Sony, you, you know that uh, Sucker Punch made Infamous. Yeah. And yeah. they made Infamous uh, Second Light, or First Light? First Light. Mm-hmm. Why did I say Second Light? Second Sun and First Light. And obviously, especially, that was a launch game, or a launch window game. And I feel like they did so many great things back then. The the game looked phenomenally, but obviously it felt a little short. Um, as far as the content is concerned, it was a very short game. And I feel like there wasn't a lot there, mainly because they were trying to hit that launch window for the launch of the PS4. So now here, there's no holds bar. Uh, they, it's a completely different take or a, a completely different um, genre that they're used to. They've been making in, in infamous games for years and years and years. And here we have a game... Uh, it's for those who haven't seen the trailer again. I'm gonna link it down in the description, but it's basically a feudal Japan uh, game that came, that came. It looks like an action kind of adventure game, and I feel like this is such a sweet spot. I feel like they nailed it, uh, at least with the vibe of the game, because this is some with Assassin's Creed just releasing Assassin's Creed Origins. A lot of people have been begging for feudal Japan for Assassin's Creed, and I feel mm-hmm. like this is. Like they're like I think they heard the Assassin's Creed yeah. like uh, kind of feedback and they said what well, shit if they're not doing it we're gonna do it so I feel like this is if you could apply that infamous formula to a game in feudal Japan with like a samurai dude I like yeah I'm, I'm into that whole culture with the samurai I mean that that's one of the things that that uh that is an interesting game and I think that for sure this game is gonna do really well on the market. 
as in just to sell. I, I think this game is going to be really epic. For sure. And uh, right after that, uh, Jim Ryan uh, came out on stage and he basically said, look, that's not the last surprise. And then they got into some stuff. So they got a, uh, a cool little game. Uh, it's kind of like an artsy game uh, called Concrete Genie. And by the way, guys, if you guys follow me on Instagram, I've been posting a lot of this news so you guys can stay up to date with it. So, uh, But Concrete Genie, that's coming uh, 2018. Uh, you have uh, a game called Erica, which is a play link. I, it's a play link game where, uh, again, you're 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 kind of deciding the fate of this girl. It looks very like a- a- atmospheric and and mm-hmm. tense. It feels almost like you're playing like a horror or a thriller a little bit. All right. Um, Erica's coming out, and then they rattled off a shit ton of VR games. So I was I was already like VR is dead. It's not coming out. This is gonna be like the next Vita for Sony, and and they basically I'm gonna rattle them off here. Ace Combat Seven. Resident Evil Biohazard is getting a gold edition. Uh, Rec Room, Moss, uh, Apex Construct, Bow to Blood, League of War VR Arena, Stifled, uh, Sprint Vector, Smash Hit Plunder, uh, Star Child. Uh, what the heck is this? It's your hand, is, it's is your hand writing, writing, brother. Sh- <laughs> writing shit. Uh, something Hunger, Zombie Hunger, or some shit like that. That Ace Combat's going to be sick. Eden I- Tomorrow, Monster of the Deep, that's the Final Fantasy 15 okay. uh, VR. And. Then you have, uh, uh, it looks almost like a Bond game called L- Lundo, from Lundo Studios. What the hell was the name of this game? I didn't write the name. I wrote, I wrote like a bunch, I wrote like a bunch of description about it, but I didn't write the name of the game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it looks like a Bond game. It's out of London Studios. It's, the it's first just, a, it's shooter. a Bond game. It's a surprise. It's a Bond game. <laughs> so Daniel Craig, so, I know oh, you're working oh, oh, on that oh, game. Here it is. Uh, Blood and Truth. Blood and Truth. Okay. Right, okay. okay. I, I did write it down. So, what do you think about that? What do you think about... I mean, I just named like 15 or 16 games coming to VR. Well, do you think people are like grasping the VR? People are going... And by the way, they, they announced a price drop for VR also this year, so... Well, I think... Honestly, I think that I'm not a I'm not a big fan with VR. I'm not. I'm one of those type of guys that if I play with a VR within an hour, I'll start throwing up. Yeah. I, I'm one of those type of guys. But let me tell you, I've heard a lot of good things about the Resident Evil 7 game. I've heard yeah, great things. things yeah. That that gold edition, and I, if I'm not mistaken, there's a DLC that's going to be coming out. It's called Not a Hero. You're playing supposedly you're playing Chris Redfield. Yes. So which yes. Yes. that that's going to be interesting. Well, we're gonna, I'm going to check that out. Um, Ace Combat. I have not played that game in many years, but I'm going to tell you that is probably one of the best pilot games that I've ever played since I was a kid. So that should be oh, fun. Man, yeah. That should be a fun um, experience, experience yeah. with the the, the VR. Yeah, it would be so. kind of cool, like a pilot. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're a pilot in the, in the cockpit. So That's kind of cool. Those are the two games to keep my eye on. If you're if you're interested with VR, I think Ace Combat. Um, what what is it? Ace Combat Seven. Ace or, Combat Seven. Jesus Skies Christ, Christ, it's Seven already, bro. Yeah. Jesus, man. The game that got me going when I was... Uh, man, I, I, I'm, I'm going to ramble on again, but basically Afterburner. If they would bring back oh, yeah, Afterburner, yeah, yeah. that would be fucking yeah. cool. So yeah, then uh, then Jim Ryan came back out on stage and he basically... These are these are the partner games. So these are uh, not exclusive to PS4, but they have some sort of exclusive content. So Ubisoft uh, came out with a Together trailer for uh, Far Cry 5, which basically... Is gonna have like this. Sh- the whole game. I did see is, that. Yes. The whole game is shareable, or, or you can share the whole have game. Have you seen the Paul in the multiplayer uh, uh, video on that? Bro, it looks it, really it, good. Jesus it looks Christ! Really good. That, that looks that looks really interesting. I, I will tell you this: Ubisoft, out of the big developers, because uh, I want to say that it's my favorite games, but I think out of the big developers, they're my favorite. I mean, they're supporting the Switch with things like Mario Cross Rabbits. They're uh, so they're doing a great content with. Uh, with PlayStation, they already said that they're not going to be releasing any story uh, DLC or charging mm-hmm. for any story DLC going forward. They don't want Rainbow to... Rainbow Six, of course. Rainbow yeah. Six, they, they're doing great. I think Ubisoft, the thing is, Ubisoft, they they like to uh, get involved with the community, like to hear the feedback, right. and I think that's very important. The fact as an industry to be doing that, I think that's really cool. So I mean, Ubisoft, I think you guys are doing a great job. Keep up with the work. So for sure. Uh, then uh, Bungie Destiny 2 expansion Curse of Osiris is coming out defen- Decem- December 5th December and it's 5th. first first to a PlayStation mm-hmm. uh, exclusive Capcom. yes absolutely the first year is going to be uh, Sony exclusive I don't know how, how it works with the uh, with the deal but yes I, I did read up about it um, yeah so it's coming out no, uh, December uh, the 5th Curse of uh, Osiris their uh, players will be able to reach level 25 and uh, power level to 330, so that's interesting. 
Um, oh, yeah, the light level, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. so um, one of the cool things for, for Sony fans, for Destiny 2, um, Crucible map. There's going to be a new Crucible map. It's called Warm Heaven. So that's going to be interesting because I, I play a lot of the Crucible. I know you're not a huge fan with Destiny, bro, so... We're going to have to get you back in, into that, man. I'm gonna have to, I, I will tell you this. I, I will probably get hooked because I love the, the gameplay that, that ha Halo is my favorite first-person yeah. shooter of all time. So, um, And then this one's kind of interesting. So Capcom came, uh, is the next partner and they, with Monster Hunter Worlds, which is a super anticipated game. It's actually the most anticipated game according to a Famitsu survey that I, that I, uh, I revealed in the last show. Uh, and this one's kind of cool because you're going to be able to play exclusively with as Alloy, which is the hero from from Horizon mm -hmm. uh, and, and Monster Hunter World. So that's their exclusive. And if you're a PS Plus member, you're going to be have access to the beta on December okay. 9th. So keep your eye out for that. Uh, and then uh, Activision 2, World War 2, uh, which we all know just came out on November 3rd, is going to have a DLC called The Resistance, which is coming out 30 days first on nice. PS4. Nice. And then this one was a surprise. So Codemasters is, has a game... Um, and they didn't say anything exclusive per se, but it's it's a game called Unrush. So mm -hmm. Codemasters is the same people that made Dirt, Dirt, Dirt Two. Uh, uh, what was the other game that I was a big? Oh, it was it was like a top tier game. I forget the name of it now. It escapes me. But they're coming out with a brand new racer game. I love racing games. So this is an arcadey racer. And then Dice, uh, they have they showed in, in game footage or in engine uh, footage of Battlefront Two, which you're super yeah. stoked about. Mm -hmm. So all that was shown on stage. And then my most anticipated game. So now that Mario's out of the way, my most anticipated game. Well, there's two uh, two anticipated games. This is this is by far the most anticipated. My second most anticipated game is Dragon Ball uh, Fighters. I, I've I've I, listen. I've heard good things about that. I'm not a huge fan, a fanatic oh, anymore man, with Dragon Ball looks, Z. It looks so. Last good. time I saw Dragon Ball Z was the Cell Saga. To me, that was the best thing that I've ever seen in my oh, entire life. Man. I need to keep up, but I did hear. Um, so you miss Majin Buu. Majin Buu I, 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 so. I miss a whole shitload of Dragon Ball uh, yeah. now, but I did he hear about the new game that's coming out with the Dragon Ball Z. I heard a lot of good things about it. So. I've seen gameplay on it. It looks intrigued. So um, I don't know. I might I might test it out. You know, sorry, Injustice Two. I might <laughs> I, I might have to go dude, to that. Dude. So I think I think it's gonna be hype. But but uh, the reason I mentioned Ask is that as hyped as I am for that game, mm -hmm. I am more hyped for this game. And this is a PS4 exclusive, Insomniac Spider-Man. Oh, that that game! So they showed a new trailer. I, I saw that trailer, and let me let me tell you guys that that Spider-Man game. I'm gonna tell you right now, this is this Spider-Man game is gonna beat Spider-Man 2. As most of you guys know, that Spider-Man 2 was the best game because it it kind of uh, expanded the open world for Spider-Man. Right. And I'm gonna tell you, I after watching the the first video, and then I saw this video. Uh, this past week, uh, man, I'm I'm hooked on it. I'm crossing my fingers that that game might be coming out in summer 2018. They only did say that it's going to be coming out 2018, so we have to keep our eye on that. But I'm going to tell you, that game <laughs> is going to be really great, no matter what. So, so I w I was a little underwhelmed with the with the uh, with the quality of the the characters, and maybe th that was because. Uh, we saw like God of War looks so great, uh, mm -hmm. and, and we'll talk about it now. But the the gameplay looks phenomenal, so I'm super stoked to be able to get like that. I feel like it's like that Sunset Overdrive kind yes. of vibe yes. or, mm -hmm. or mobility in a Spider-Man game, and that's gonna be super super great. So that's the game that I'm most uh, stoked about. After that, they show Quantic Dreams Detroit Become Human, which is a pretty rough trailer. Yeah, yeah, um, I think so. It, it, it was a it kind of dragged a little bit don't you it, it did a little bit but that those games are very story he heavy and it's about um making decisions and, and altering history a little bit so depending on how you play the game uh it, it would uh, influence the result mm -hmm. so uh, i i don't know if if i like it or not i definitely like the aesthetic it looks freaking phenomenal uh, but I don't know if it's a game that I'm gonna be into. It feels like a like a souped up uh, or a better looking uh, kind of Telltale game. So um, I'm interested to see. I'm gonna keep my eye out for that. But they showed that. Um, what the hell did I write here? Dude has robot take care of daughter. <laughs> my show notes. My notes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, 
Let's see what else. So the, uh, right after that, they showed God of War, a uh, God of War trailer. So they showed some gameplay, and it's basically, uh, they emphasize more of that relationship between his him son. and his son. Right. Uh, and his son in this game is kind of directing him, saying, "Oh, screaming in the background, oh, dad, like, mm-hmm. like dad, or whatever." But he's like, "Oh, go get him, whatever." So how I don't do you know think, why. How do you, how do you think? How how do you think the AI is going to work in that game? How do you think? I because I've always been the type of guy. If you work, if you get a game. And you have to get an AI as your partner. Is it gonna be? Is it gonna just be a dumb? I don't AI? know. I don't know that he's fighting. I think he's just there for kind of a story element. Uh, I guess we'll we'll see if if the kid's playable. But um, that would be an interesting. I'm take. already I'm already stoked because the fact that they kind of changed God of War how it was for the past three previous games. Uh, from God of War, from one through right. three, if I'm not mistaken. But wouldn't it be crazy if they just this is this is all like a tease about the beginning of the game, and they may, it's basically uh, him with his son for the first hour, and then mm-hmm. he like dies or something, and his son That's takes over. That, that, Can be you imagine cr- that shit? That, that'd be crazy, man. I I just hope that they don't do uh, they just don't do a a, a Marcus kill, you know crying out loud dumb as in Gears of War. <laughs> if you uh, guys remember that one, so. Uh, right after that, they ba- gave, ba- basically gave us a reminder of uh, Horizon Frozen Wells releasing on November 7th. Um, so the complete edition, which I didn't mention on any releases, is November 7th. The DLC and the complete edition is coming out $49.99, I think. That's nice. A, that's a, a cool price. And then they showed gameplay for the first time of Shadow of the Colossus. So they did show that, a teaser trailer in E3. That looks amazing. It looks man. really good, right? Have you ever played the first one? I missed it, man. I missed it. And the then I tried going back to it, but it doesn't, I guess it's, it's like, it feels very old. So how it works is the first one, it's pretty much, I, I don't know that much of the story. I just did play the gameplay, but I, I played the first one, guys. And that was, that was a really great game. It's pretty much you fight bosses. Uh, it's just your, so it's your, like a boss rush. Yeah. It's just like that. Um, but after I saw that, I mean, I, I, I like that. That's a, probably one of the top games in my list. Um, but did, was there a release date for that one? So no, they didn't show a release date, but actually, yeah, February 20, uh, February. Oh man, I have it. I posted on my Instagram the date. So I February. That maybe it's in February. It's in middle of February. I think. So supposedly Shadows of, of Colossus comes out, uh, tw- February, 2018. Um, I mean, like I said, that that was a really great game for to be exclusively to the the Sony, for sure. Oh that man, thing. that's a huge gap for them. So yeah. I I really enjoyed. It. I I thought it was gonna be the, when they first announced that. I thought it was gonna be like a more like uh, uh, in the vein of um, the Last Guardian, like a little janky yeah, yeah, a little PlayStation bit like Three kind of gameplay. But it doesn't mm-hmm. feel that way. It doesn't look that way. Uh, and then they closed off the show with probably the, the the most anticipated game of a lot of people not necessarily me but mo- most people are waiting for this and it's last of us 2 so there was a lot of controversy with this trailer so they showed a very grotesque very violent um kind of um like the walking vibe. dead type of style yeah so i mean we all understand that this this world is very like horrific mm-hmm. uh it's very po- you know po- it's post apocalyptic kind of uh zombie run kind of world and but they they basically show the trailer and it shows like this this lady that's basically gonna get gutted they're hanging her and they're basically gonna gut her stomach and i mean if I, i'm not gonna describe it so much but it, the point of it is very grotesque so it was getting a lot of like bad hype saying like you know why are they showing me this like this is not convincing me to buy uh, Last of Us 2 which is if anything is deterring a lot of people and you gotta remember like the, there was probably like 300,000 people watching this stream mm-hmm. and some of those people are kids and while the games are rated the trailers are not and that's why they can get away with some of this stuff so I wonder if that did more of a negative thing obviously the people who are hyped about this game are gonna like that trailer because they mm-hmm. understand what that world is for the, but the, for the people who don't know this game they got I'll, I'll, I'll be one of those guys I'm gonna be one of, I'm gonna be one of those sorry to cut you off I'm gonna be one of those guys I've never played the first one I need to play the first one for sure yeah. everybody's been telling me Javi you need to play the last of us that is a really important game right, right there guys last of us remastered um, um, I did see the, the, the first trailer that came out, which was a big hype in E3. If I'm not mistaken, it was the E3 yeah. when they released mm-hmm. the new trailer for, uh, well, the first trailer for The Last of Us Part Two, And I mean, it, it looks good. I think that's, that's, a. Uh, there are some games that emotionally that you get attached to it. And I think this is going to be an emotional game right. where characters are going to decide what's going to happen with them. Are they going to make good decisions, bad decisions? I did hear a lot of the fact that last of the, the Last of Us, the first one, was a really emotional like game. 
that it, right, it just right. it, 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 it breaks. It resonated you. with a lot of people. Yes, yeah. yes. So I'm gonna I'll, I'm gonna check that out sometime before the end of this year and give it a try. So, so I did want to mention uh, before we went off, I had like this this whole crazy shit, but we're running kind of long, <laughs> so I'm gonna save that for next episode. Uh, um, I'm gonna save some of the stuff that happened for this episode for the next episode, but uh, I cannot not mention uh, now that we're on the topic of uh playstation mm-hmm. is they announced uh, and they it was kind of crazy because it wasn't like a huge announcement but basically for those that don't know sony has like a reward program yes and through that reward program anytime like you buy certain things within the store or uh maybe you scan a dvd or a blu-ray or some sort they give you these points and with those points you could buy like actual games um and psn uh credits and stuff like that so now they made it so that depending on the trophies that you get, so uh, each of them is going to have a point associated with them. So you got your bronze, your mm-hmm. silver, and your platinum. Well, how it works is gold it's, and platinum. Yes, yeah, so it's it's pretty much silver, uh, gold, and platinum. Um, I I can't I don't remember what it was. I, I did see it on. on so the, yeah, I have it, and I'll link it. But yeah. it's basically, they're going to be associated with a point with a point system, and that point system you can. Uh, turn into rewards uh, rewards to, to, buy, to buy buy games and you stuff. know buy games movies digitally and awesome which is i think that's very interesting that the fact that if you're working hard on the game and doing trophies just the same way as as microsoft does with their uh achievements on xbox live i think it's a smart thing to do for the community the fact that gamers should be rewarded with the fact okay if i beat this game and i get trophies or achievements can I do something with these trophies? Right, you want something sa- tangible yeah. that they can actually get with that, not just like a hey, like I oh hey, you know, like hey, um, you know, my, this person's gamer tag or PlayStation ID is like you know, uh, whatever his name is. The fact that I have the score, like that, that's cool, that's great. But the fact that we you want more, you yeah, know, yeah. we want more than that. So that's, I think I think this is cra- it's crazy to me that something like this hasn't been done sooner. Uh, you know, Nintendo Switch had a there was a rumor that they were working on some sort of um, kind of like trophy system. Mm-hmm. They haven't said anything officially, but I was like, if they do that, they can tie that to their coin systems, which that coin system lets you get. St- I mean, right now it's things like wallpapers and shit like that. But if they can do something like what Sony is doing now, I, I'm like, why haven't hasn't anybody done that where it can entice people to come in? And dude, if I can go in and I know I get a certain amount of trophies and I can get a free copy of whatever game on PS4, mm-hmm. I'm all in. Okay. Okay. I'm all in for that. That that's gonna be. We're gonna see how it goes with uh this this uh, rewards points for Sony. I I think it's it's gonna be a big pain. I'm pretty sure that the fact that that other other companies like Nintendo and I'm pretty sure Microsoft and if I'm not mistaken, Microsoft does exactly the same thing. I could be wrong, but I mean that's that's pretty cool that the fact that Sony is doing that. Not to mention uh, Sony. Yes, I am a hardcore Sony fanatic. Um, just to let you guys know. That November 7th, um, I think uh, we were going to touch this subject. The fact November 7th is going to be the release date of uh, Xbox One Xbox X. Xbox One X, right. So that was going to be my next point. Yeah, so yep. th- the just to let you guys know, Sony's not going to go out without a bang right now. <laughs> I'm letting you know that right now because I did tell this to James earlier. The fact that Sony is going to be releasing that same day. They're going to be releasing another uh, PlayStation Pro uh, just by itself in white. Just like they did with the Destiny uh, bundle, which I, I don't know why they would do that because I did see that the fact that they're releasing the week after, which is Battlefront 2, right. they're releasing uh, PlayStation 4 Pro um, exclusive, not exclusive, it's like a, it's like a PlayStation 4 Pro for Star Wars Battlefront 2, which is like, oh, it looks like a Star Wars console with the game. And I, I don't know why they would do that, but I guess they want to do that just to, you know... The fact to tell tell Microsoft, hey, listen, you want to launch a, a new console on November seventh? We got this. We we got this, man. So I'm like the way I see it is everybody's fighting which is the best console, and you know for me, especially a guy that has a 4K TV, um, as a lot of people don't know, these new consoles that are coming out are going to be 4K supports. So if you guys don't have 4K TV, it's not worth to get it. That's the only thing, and not to mention, it gives you a little bit more of a uh, uh, memory, of course. Right. So I, I'm gonna get into that. So I think that's interesting to for Sony to do that. I mean, the main difference is gonna be people are gonna go to the store mm-hmm. and they're gonna see Xbox One X, just bare bones, no games or anything, four ninety nine. Mm-hmm. PS4 Pro, 
and this, I feel like it's happening in tw- like 2012 or 2011 all over again. And if PS4 Pro, which I had I had predicted that they were gonna announce a price drop for it, but it didn't happen. But still, PS4 Pro White Destiny 2 399. Mm-hmm. So well, actually that store. that was that was actually 450. The the Destiny De- Destiny so Two four fifty, but it's it still priced fifty dollars under with the game included. But yeah, so you're saving if you did the the Destiny Two bundle for the PS4 Pro, it's it was four fifty. You're pretty much saving ten dollars plus, not to mention the season pass. You're just paying for a game for fifty bucks and the console. So yeah. technically, you got a good deal with the Destiny Two bundle PS4 Pro. But I think the the thing is now since the holiday season's coming up. A lot of people are going to try to figure out what is the best console to get. Right, and they're going to be, they're going to be looking at dollars. So, uh, uh, so these are some things that some of the big outlets had to say about uh, Xbox One X. So, GameStop uh, was quoted: "If you have a 4K HDR TV, don't have a current gen console, and are looking to purchase one, however, the Xbox One X is a great choice." Uh, IGN: It's hard to believe Microsoft exclusives like Gears of War 4 can look so good and run so smoothly on a box that costs less than half. Or would you pay for a high-end gaming PC? Ouch. So people, are, people are, are 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 very high on this thing. So US gamer, it has to be said, five hundred dollars is pretty steep. Asking for the Xbox One X has to offer. So there's a bad one. But then I'll roll down here because there's a bunch of them. This one I thought was pretty pretty interesting. So Polygon said, undeniably the best console to play pla- multi-platform games, but with the limited number of enhanced Xbox One X titles, is it's uh, it's been able to test. I haven't seen enough to be able to recommend the console in the in the light of a high price. Yeah, that that price is way too high, man. For five hundred dollars, right there, for that you buy a console with a game. That the fact that you're getting a better deal, like I'm gonna tell sure. you guys, like a pl- the play. I'm, I know I've been talking about the PlayStation nonstop today on this broadcast, but you're getting a great deal of getting a PlayStation with a game. And a season pass, like for example, like I told you, James, that Battlefront mm-hmm. Two is coming out next week, and they're coming out with that bundle for the PS4 Pro. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not, I'm not too sure about the price on that. I'm pretty sure that might be 450. But for that, you buy a PlayStation, you save fifty dollars, you get a game with that, and I'm pretty sure you get the season pass with that. What is a uh, Microsoft gonna get? Oh, an Xbox One X for five hundred dollars. Come on, Microsoft. You guys got to come out with a game with that as well. It, it's gonna if you are getting the latest console that's gonna come out and that's gonna be 4K quality, you need to come out with with, yeah, with a game with that. It, so. And that's the problem right now. The fact that originally before when Microsoft came out with the Xbox, it was in their the beginning stage with the first Xbox. But I think they won a lot of the consumers of the fact when the Xbox 360 came out. I think they their Xbox Live. The avatar and all that stuff was great and fantastic, but I think they've lost a lot of their people switching to different consoles. Like for example, the Nintendo Switch, uh, the Sony PlayStation 4 uh, Pro. I mean, that's and, the... and and themselves they're they're putting everything that's on Xbox is on PC, so they're eating their own people as yeah. well. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that I could say that is kind of cool, but we would have to see what it does is the backwards compatibility, what they do with the original Xbox One. Oh, for sure. That's the only thing. But I'm kind of getting a feeling of the fact that they were, when they do that compatibility, it, it might... I, I'm gonna, It's going to sound really bad, is the fact that those graphics are not going to look that great on HDR quality, if you look at it. Yeah, they, you're talking about the old games. Yeah, the yeah. old games. Like, um, you know, Crimson Sky, they, they announced it on, on E3. Like, okay, but if you look at it, we're talking about a console that came out years ago, and you're gonna get, make it compatible. Okay, cool. What what are what are we gonna get with that? Are we gonna get with trophies with that? Yeah, it it, it, w- it would be nice if they say, hey, here's the Xbox One X, and here's three or four different games that you can get at launch that are fantastic. Mm-hmm. Oh, and by the way, here's some backward compatibility games that you can also play on there. It's something that's supplemental to Absolutely. the main thing. That's just something they don't have. They don't have like the the main like hook uh, for these things. So. Uh, did you have anything else to add there? Uh, no, I'm, I'm good with that, man. All right, so we are a little bit over an hour on this show, so mm-hmm. we got we got plenty of uh, content, oh, uh, if damn. you will. Uh, DLC's coming. Yes. Nah, <laughs> <laughs> we'll bring some DLC and some Doke. 
out next uh, next week. But uh, I want to thank you guys so much for uh, listening and watching. Uh, Javi, thanks for joining me in the show. Appreciate it, man. Is there anything that you want to Yeah, shout out. A couple shout outs. Uh, Tim from MCC. Yes. That man is a genius. Uh, if you guys don't know Tim, Tim is the owner, if I'm not mistaken, the owner of the MCC, a comic book store that's located on 142 and 8th Street. 142. Wow. 147. Lost. 142nd and 8th Street. That guy is amazing. He'll help you out with anything, with comics or anything like that. That guy knows everything i'm telling you right now you can talk to him for hours in comics <laughs> another shout he out is, shit. yeah another shout out as well with another broadcast as well that i spoke to these guys they're called uh the pixel reel uh my friend gabby and, and eduardo they're cool guys they talk about films check yes. them out um like i said james i appreciate it for to be on the show man for um, sure, man. hopefully i'll be in, in the show in the future guys but we have a lot more interesting uh, stuff to talk about in the future uh, uh, for sure, man. but I appreciate gonna... it, man. Like I said, man, I'm not gonna talk about any more Nintendo Switches, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna talk about any more Mar Mario Odyssey. I'm gonna get this guy out. I'm gonna get him back in Modern Warfare again. <laughs> we'll see how it goes if we can get him back into the World War II. So we'll check that out. Cool, man. Cool. Uh, again, I want to thank you guys for joining me. Uh, also, uh, it, it, you mentioned it, Tim. I was gonna actually bring that to light. We have I posted a episode on YouTube. Tim and I did a basically a breakdown of Call of Duty World War II. Uh, and uh, our thoughts of what we thought uh, the game made differently, some some missteps that they have, and some good things that they've done. Uh, that's on YouTube. I'll link that to to you guys. Uh, it's right now. It's unofficially named uh, Jimmy and Timmy. Jimmy and Timmy, huh? Yeah. So Damn, Jimmy, uh, and, Jimmy Timmy. and Timmy. Uh, right now, I don't know if that's gonna be the permanent name, but it is right now. We're gonna probably bring that to you guys as well. Um, so keep an eye out for that uh, as we go forward. Again, guys, thank you guys so much for watching and listening. Until next time, guys, game on.